Just be careful, you little rookies, because now I'm here too. And if there's a criminal right in front of me with such a large bounty, then you know that I can't just let you go. Now let me ask, have you ever been kicked at the speed of light? Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. And today, we're going to sit back, relax, and talk about one of the most mellow superpowers within the entire series, Marine Admiral Kizaru. Kizaru is a fairly easygoing gent of roughly Marine Admiral height, who just so happens to wield one of the most incredible powers within this exceptionally crazy world. Although you'd never know it from his attitude though, because Kizaru can best be described as absent-minded, often making just plain careless decisions, which you think may impact his ability to perform his duties as an Admiral of the largest organized military force in the world, but uh, somehow he gets by. And this is because behind this layer of easygoing chap, there is a terrifyingly focused being who once given a goal, will stop at nothing to accomplish it. Now, as with all admirals, we should note that Kizaru is an epithet, meaning yellow monkey, as all of the admirals given a title incorporating a color and an animal, and Kizaru's real name is actually Borsalino. However, within the series, Kizaru is what he's best known as, so we're going to stick with that. So as for how Kizaru came to be where he is today, well, unfortunately, currently we know very little about his younger years, save for an image that Oda drew of him as a child, depicting a seemingly poor and studious, yet very cheerful young boy. And then at some stage later in life, he would come to join the Marines. Now the following information comes from One Piece Volume 1000, which is the companion manga to One Piece Film Z. So it isn't canon per se, but according to Volume 1000, Kizaru joined the Marines at the age of 26, alongside fellow future Admiral Sakazuki, who was 23. And here they would both be instructed by the legendary but non-canon figure Zephyr, and even at this early stage, Kizaru was considered to be something of a monster. But back to canon events now, and Kizaru would rise rather rapidly within the Marines, and is shown to have attained a high but admittedly unknown rank by the time the events of the Ed War came about, which was roughly 27 years prior to the current timeline. However, Kizaru would rise to the rank of Vice Admiral by the time the Sun Pirates were operating, and in fact, it is Kizaru who was responsible for defeating and imprisoning Arlong, easily, I might add, and of course, he would eventually become an Admiral and be given the Kizaru epithet. And as such a profound Marine in the series, Kizaru also practices his own brand of justice, in this case, being unclear justice, which is a, it's a bit of a middle ground approach between the absolute justice practiced by Sakazuki and the lazy justice held by Kuzan. As a result, Kizaru encounters far less moral crises than Kuzan, but at the same time, he won't go out of his way for the sake of extremist absolute justice. And despite his position within the Marines, Kizaru is exceptionally casual, even with his fellow admirals and superiors. For an admiral, Kizaru isn't really the greatest of leaders either, and he has a definite preference for taking orders rather than issuing them, even if they come from his close subordinates. So how is this man even an admiral? Well, we're going to have a pretty clear understanding of that as we examine his first appearance in the series during the Sabadi arc, where he was summoned immediately after Luffy had punched a world noble. And here we would get a terrifying taste of Kizaru's power. To kick things off, Kizaru possesses a devil fruit known as the Pika Pika no Mi, a Logia type fruit that allows its user to conjure, manipulate, and become light, which immediately makes him quite possibly the fastest character in the entire series because he can move at quote unquote light speed. And the whole light speed thing, yes, it's up for debate, something that I covered in much more detail in the Pika Pika no Mi's entry of the devil fruit encyclopedia. So if you'd like to check that out, then there will be a link to it in the description below. But in addition, this speed makes his raw power output simply incredible as he has the ability to strike people at his incarnation of light speed, which usually wields devastating results. Furthermore, Kizaru can also conjure light in a laser-like manner and fire condensed beams at his opponents, also with immediately crippling results. But Kizaru's power is not simply limited to his devil fruit as he also possesses a mastery of observation and armament haki. And with all of these factors combined, he became an impossible opponent to face on Sabadi, as he proceeded to near instantly defeat four members of the worst generation and even briefly face off against a true living legend being the former first mate of the Pirate King, Silver's Rayleigh. And despite coming up against another impossible opponent, Kizaru remained entirely calm and collected as per usual, casually displaying his true potential in the realm of combat. However, this demonstration would not stop at Sabadi as shortly afterwards, Kizaru, along with the bulk of the Marine forces, was summoned to Marineford to fight against the Whitebeard Pirates in an event known as the Paramount War, with his most notable actions in this conflict being a brief skirmish with Whitebeard's first division commander, Marco the Phoenix, as well as challenging Whitebeard himself. Although the Paramount War would show us that there is a limit to Kizaru's insane abilities, as neither he nor any singular combatant on the battlefield were able to overcome Whitebeard. And furthermore, when the red-haired pirates arrived to cease the fighting, for the first time in the series, Kizaru was stopped directly in his tracks with a simple threat from one Ben Beckman. Sadly, following the Paramount War and the time skip, Kizaru's appearances in the series have become quite sparse, having appeared briefly in the Zoark to comment on the strength of Edward Weevil, as well as the Reverie arc, where he suggested to now fleet Admiral Sakazuki that he travel to Wano and handle a situation after intercepting a communication between Big Mom and Kaido, further demonstrating Kizaru's pure fearlessness as he actively volunteered to put himself directly in the center of two emperors of the sea. 
Some more fun facts about Kizaru. As with all canon admirals featured in the series thus far, Kizaru's design is taken from a Japanese actor, in this case being Kunie Tanaka, who actually played a character named Borsellino in the action comedy Truck Yaro film series. One of Kizaru's preferred methods of transportation is via Cannonball, where he fires a shot and then uses his absurd speed to plonk himself on top of the ball and ride towards his explosive destination. Three of Kizaru's attacks being Yata no Kagami, Ama no Murakumo, and Yasakani no Magatama are directly inspired by the sacred treasures of Japan, being a mirror, a jewel, and a sword respectively. Kizaru has a primary role in the non-canon film Zed, in which he confronted his instructor Zephyr on two occasions, and is ultimately responsible for defeating and possibly killing him. Despite Kizaru's apparent failure to capture any of the worst generation during his time on Sabadi, he did manage to arrest at least 500 other pirates during his impromptu visit. Like many other members of the marine organization, Kizaru harbors a deep distrust towards the warlords of the sea, who are essentially pirates sanctioned by the world government. However, to Kizaru, pirates are pirates and simply cannot be trusted, a belief that was reaffirmed when warlord of the sea Bartholomew Kuma saved the straw hats from his grasp on Sabadi. And finally, a truly useless fact, during the events of One Piece film Z, Kizaru was feeling slightly more casual than usual, choosing to abandon his collared shirt and tie in favor of a fashionable turtleneck. But that pretty much does it for Kizaru. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured on the next One Piece, no one. And now, my best impression of Kizaru. Ooh. <laughs> Fuck, I spilt my water.